I want to talk about moving overseas for a testing role. I'm going to share my experience or I'll share my story. I will also give some advice as to finding a role when you are based overseas, but you'd like to move to a new country. And then what to be aware of when you've uh, landed the job uh, in terms of cultural differences and so on. Let's get into it. I'm originally from New Zealand and I moved to Sweden in 2015 for work. But before I moved for the role, I had actually um, met my previous employer, the one who sponsored me, uh, at a conference. My New Zealand employer, uh, we had a conference budget or a training budget, and I chose to spend that on a conference called Let's Test. I went to the conference, loved it, met some amazing people. And when I came back to New Zealand, uh, they uh, are organization did layoffs and I was affected by that. Now my original I guess life plan was to move to Europe a year after this so uh, about in 2016 Uh, but being laid off kind of uh, put a little bit of a fast forward on that plan. I then reached out to some contacts I made at the conference. I said hello I'm kind of keen to come to Europe. I do know of any jobs going Uh, And one person said to me, I actually saw this tweet. I think you should reach out to them. This is where uh, sponsorships and visas get into it. Uh, I reached out to the Swiss branch because I thought, well, I I speak German. Uh, In Zurich, you speak uh, Swiss German. So this is a a match, right? Uh, But they said, since I'm not an EU citizen, uh, we wouldn't be able to go forward. But try the Swedish branch. They connected me uh, with the CEO of the Swedish branch. And after three video calls... Uh, I then found myself going through the paperwork of uh, a work permit. I would say you are probably looking at three routes to moving overseas f- uh, for work or having to, you know, finding another job overseas. Uh, the first is getting sponsored. Uh, so what this means is you, you apply for a role and then the company does some uh, paperwork. Uh, they have to uh, coordinate with the migration agency or whatever the equivalent is in, in, a, in, the, in your country to, to bring you in. Uh, so in my case, when I moved to Sweden, I uh, applied for a work permit or Arbeitstilstand, and then my company had to, for example, you know, show that I'd, they'd be paying my insurances, um, they'd be paying me a fair salary, so that I'm, as a foreigner, I'm not being taken advantage of, for example, uh, and also having to uh, advertise uh, extra, this is, I guess, in the EU, that an EU, someone in the EU or an EU citizen couldn't do what I w- would be doing. The second one, which I won't really be going into, but I guess is worth mentioning, is if you are the partner of someone getting sponsored. And so what would happen here is, let's say your husband or wife uh, got a job offer, and now the visa would be tied to them, but you would get some sort of partner visa. Uh, Now, what this is worth mentioning is when you then are looking for a job, you can then say, look... You don't have to sponsor me, like I'm looking for a job, but you don't actually do the paperwork for me. I'm here on a partner visa. Uh, and then that's something a little bit easier for that company, you know, in a way. Uh, the last one, uh, which I've seen done a lot, is when you work for a large multinational com- company, being transferred. I don't really want to name names. Of, you know, there's a large um, consultancy companies we've all heard of, or, or even, you know, product companies. Uh, and you're based in a country and there's a project or an opportunity overseas. So you would then take up that opportunity. Uh, they'd have to do the paperwork. They'd, you know, get you the work permit, for example. Uh, and then I've seen people do this is, you know, while they're there, they're like, oh, now that I'm here and I actually don't really like my job anymore, I'm going to look for other opportunities. And it's a lot easier to look for jobs when, when you're actually there. Let's get into actually finding a testing role. Uh, I've got a video on finding um, testing jobs, so I won't go into it too much, but I will focus on advice that is specific to your context if you're looking to move overseas for work. If, if I was to go through the options I mentioned earlier, uh, the most difficult one is to seek sponsorship from your, for an employer because uh, you really have the onus on you to, to prove that you're better than uh, all the locals um, and then you're also competing <laughs> at an international market. The second thing I would say to be aware of is to is to look into if there's some sort of job seeker visa. Uh, so in many countries, there are specific there are visas that are specifically 
for the situation of job seeking. Uh, so what would happen is for some sort of period of time, um, you can be in that country with the purpose of looking for a job and you generally just need to you know, show that uh, you've got the finances to support yourself while you're there. Uh, another thing to be aware of, not every job ad is explicit as to whether or not they offer sponsorship. I had seen job ads, say, in New Zealand that explicitly mention New Zealand citizens and residents only, so that they're showing clearly that they're not looking into sponsoring people. I've seen other sorts of job ads that go uh, visa sponsorship offered, and then that's a very obvious green light to apply if you're based overseas. But like 90% of the time, they're not going to mention it. And assuming you're going to put in you know, time and effort into your applications, I would strongly suggest reaching out to the hiring manager or whoever the you know, please contact, you know, that name listed, uh, to see is, is it open to international candidates. Now, since there's extra work and I, I guess some, you know, har- it's, there's extra uh, hoops you need to jump if you're going to bring in people from overseas, generally speaking, uh, yeah, I would say have a safer bet with a larger company. Um, I, I was pretty lucky, but you know, generally speaking. But then just because uh, a large company has done it before, so you say, oh, my friend has joined this company, so they offer a sponsorship, and that um, there's another job av- uh, advertised for that company, um, I should apply. Uh, I would still, unless, you know, unless they explicitly state that visa sponsorship is offered, I would still contact the hiring manager and ask, Um, if they are open to international candidates. I think this is a very hard thing to do if you're brand new in your career. Uh, If you've got some years of experience, um, I strongly recommend um, getting some testing experience, you know, where where you're currently based and then trying your luck overseas, then trying to do that straight out of university. This is tied to um, my experience of when when the employer has to do extra work to bring you in, you'd have to you know how do you answer the question why are you better qualified than you know local candidates it is a very much harder question to answer if you don't have an experience at all so if you're like oh I've, I've always had a dream of living in say um, Germany then uh, I would suggest give it a few years uh, and try your try your luck later I'm going to go a bit into what to think of when uh, you've landed the job, um, but I guess before that, negotiating your compensation package or a few things to be aware of there, uh, specifically when you're looking to move overseas for work. Uh, The first is being paid fairly. Uh, It can be hard to get an idea of market rates if you're based overseas. I remember when I came to Sweden, uh, I was given an offer, uh, and then I actually ran that offer past my husband. Uh, He also works in IT, he's a developer, And I was like, you know, I mean, at that point, we we weren't even um, a couple. We were two people who liked each other. And I showed him my contract in Swedish and I said, uh, hey, um, like, is this, does this sound right? Um, How can I tell if it's right? And he recommended some sites to me for me to check the the, uh, market rates um, here in Sweden. Um, The second is um, benefits or things really specific to your country. So things like. Um, how many days of vacation is normal, uh, insurances, pension, uh, these things can differ between the country you're in. Uh, so I would ask, you know, connections or friends that you have in the country you're eyeing up about what you can expect there. Uh, here in Sweden, um, one unique thing is some sort of health uh, health care allowance, which is money you can spend on massages, on, on a gym membership. So when I saw that in my contract, I, you know, I, I looked up the word in, in Google Translate and um, I, it would, I then learned that this is like a unique Swedish benefit that isn't offered in New Zealand. Two things I've noticed, not just from my experience of moving from New Zealand to Sweden, but just with working with different cultures is communication styles and um, like some like power hierarchy uh, in organizations. So with communication style, um, some cultures are a lot more direct than others. So what uh, I've seen can be seen as uh, offensive is actually quite appreciated in another culture. Say in a country like Sweden, 
organizational structure is when I say it's quite flat, I mean the the perception of power distance between between roles when you go up don't feel so big. Uh, I hope you found this video useful if you're looking to move overseas. Uh, if you have any questions about this, uh, write in the comments. Thanks.